Gina DeLuca here. All right, so today is the uh, big collaboration uh, for World AIDS Day, bringing awareness and supporting a good cause, which is AIDSUnited.org. Um, so during this premiere, this is a nice long uh, premiere train we have going on today. And throughout these premieres, when someone uh, donates a super sticker, um, you know, if you donate a super sticker today during this premiere, it will be going to AIDS United and, uh, you know, a very worthy cause. So today, the um, AIDS awareness ribbon is red and so our theme today is red and I'm going to be doing a spiral straight board. I am using for my background uh, Bordeaux red from Arteza and uh, I have Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Sapphire and in sterling silver. If you have tried to use red and white together and you get pink or you use red, white, and blue together and get purple, this is a good way. Uh, if, if you use silver in place of the white, it will not uh, appear quite as pink when it blends. Um, so we're going to uh, have some fun here. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, it's about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it's disappearing pretty quickly. It's making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. Kind of looks like a pencil lead. If you have lumps appearing, if it gets thinner and thicker, then you need to do some more mixing. But that is the consistency that we're looking for. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I want to make sure that there is enough of my background color to react with my cell makers. So the red is going to be my base coat. It's also the background color. Base coat is what goes on the canvas. The background color is what goes first into the cup for a straight pour. You will notice that I have already covered my edges and uh, that is because uh, the way that I mix a straight pour, it's pretty thin. And you might not get the best coverage on the sides. But the, that's how the magic happens on top. If you keep trying straight pours and you keep not having luck, go thinner. Go thinner and see what happens. You might think that you're going thin enough, but you might not be. So I uh, cover the sides to make sure that I have full coverage on the sides. Now to put some paint in a cup. I'm gonna start with the blue. Always check your consistency before uh, putting it in the cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Okay, I'm going to pour it from up high. I want this to sink into that red. And I like to use the color that has the most contrast with the background color. I like to put that color in last because some of that ends up at the very bottom of the cup and then that becomes the center of your painting. So I like for the center to have the most contrast and that's kind of what gives these paintings that glow. But in order to get it to sink to the bottom, 
to do that, you do have to pour from up high. It does take practice. I used to be a bartender, so that comes semi-naturally to me. I'm gonna take what is left in my cup here of my background color and just go over top of the paints that have risen to the top. It is a good sign when they sink and then they start coming up to the top. That's how you know these paints are going to sell. They're going to react with each other. It's going to quickly pop the bubbles in the base coat so they don't pop up through my pour later. Okay, I'm going to pour slowly. I'm sorry, I'm going to pour quickly. Spin slowly. I'm gonna spin clockwise. And I'm going to try to be as much in the center as possible. So the faster I pour and the slower I spin, the more of the spiral effect I will get. If I spin too quickly or pour too slowly, it will just look like a ring pour. And that's not what I want. The closer I get to the end of my cup, the closer I get to my canvas. And once that silver comes out, here it comes. I want to give it one and a half spins. That's kind of my Fibonacci formula. The center is the focal point. It's going to get much bigger than it is. So it is good to really pay attention and give some love to that area. Whew, okay. Perfect, 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 perfect center. Love that. Okay, 10 on that dismount, baby. Pop in the bubbles. Okay, so as I let this sit, cells will pop up. And because these deco art paints have a hydrophobic effect when they are used with a glossier paint, matte paints and glossy paints will have this kind of reaction. Um, the cells will get bigger. And then when I spin it, they will stretch and get even bigger still. But that is kind of the key to um, older cells. The center is going to look really, really sweet. I'm, I'm stoked about that. I think it's gonna be a good one. So I'm gonna let this sit for a bit, um, just to let these cells develop. Okay, I've let this sit for a bit. I could let it sit a little longer. Um, but I'm kind of happy with what's going on here and I'm good. All right, let's do it. 
And remember, you do not have to spin it fast. It does not need to fling on your walls. My paint usually doesn't drip further than two inches away from the edge of the canvas. Okay, so you can see this is really pulling to one side. So I'm going to push the canvas that way. And when I spin it, this side will pull more. That is centrifugal force. Like when you're on the, the merry round thing, when you're a kid at the playground, if you're in the center, you're good to go. If you're out on the edge, you are flying off of that thing. If somebody gives it a good spin. But that is one way to control the flow while you are using a spinner. I think that's it. This is the composition I want. That spiral is perfection. The cells are looking great. I'm gonna let this sit and I'll bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. This is pretty much perfection uh, in, in my taste here. What I'm trying to go for. Couldn't have asked for more. This is exactly what I wanted. I love these little tiny cells that popped up here that kind of look like that little evil eye symbol. It wards off evil. It's not giving you the evil eye. It wards off evil, but very cool 3D effects. And you can see it doesn't really create a lot of pink. That's not pink there. That's actually the silver sitting on top of the red. So the red is kind of shining through. I love how these cells kind of taper off into that spiral. That came out really cool. I mean, how, how are you mad at that? Can't be mad at that. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Check out the description box below for lots of helpful information. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me for today. Nate Bright is up next. So hop on over to his channel and see what kind of groovy stuff he's got going on. And uh, thank you for hanging out and participating in this collaboration for World AIDS Day. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>